Hi guys, I'm Charles Brownstein from northerntransmissions.com. Thank you as always for checking out Records in My Life. This episode features the one and only Mac DeMarco. Well, let's check out what he likes. Mac DeMarco here, Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm going to be talking about a couple records that mean a lot to me for northerntransmissions.com. God bless. Happy Halloween. Um, I'll go with uh, Plastic Ono Band by John Lennon. Yeah, record I got when I was maybe 13 or something. One of the first like vinyls I actually ever had. Um, it's kind of like a little bit more like John's kind of like a little more raw. It was like the first solo album he did. It was like he's like you know singing about uh, you know some touchy things. He's singing about his family. It sounds really cool too. Really dry, good drumming, good uh, bass playing. Can I say one quick thing? I yeah. hate to interrupt you. You seem like a, an uplifting, happy person. That yeah. record, that's a dark record though. Sorry, I just, sort I'm of, surprised yeah. it's the first one. Kind of. I don't know. I mean, it's sort of dark, but it's also, there's some like love songs on it too. But I think that, I don't know. Just because a song is sad doesn't mean it can't be uplifting, I think. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that's Plastic Ono Band for you though. Yeah. Number two record, let's go with... Uh, um, I'll go with Harvest by Neil Young. Um, classic Neil disc right there. This one I didn't get into until maybe I was a little bit... I mean, I loved Neil Young for a lot of my life, but I really started listening to this record when I was living in Montreal with Kira over there. There she is. Um, but yeah, got it on vinyl at a Valley Village or something. That album, to me, I mean, the songs are great. A lot of classic Neil songs on there. Some weird ones like uh, what is that? Uh, Man needs a maid. That's kind of a weird song. Cool song anyway. But but the production on that album is like so dry. I think he did it in the barn in his barn on his property or something. The drums are just like just down to the basics. Just all you need. Bass is great. Real dry. Real crispy. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So I don't know. Important in my life. Actually, I think I was listening to that record a lot when I tried to do my number two album. I think for number two, I was just trying to rip off the sound that Harvest had. So I don't know if I did a good job, but I got something else out of the uh, the whole thing anyway. So okay, yeah, we'll go with YMO album. We'll go with the self-titled Yellow Magic Orchestra album. These guys are uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto, Rumi Hosono, and this guy uh, Yukihiro Takahashi. They're from Japan. They were kind of like uh, uh, like the Beatles of Japan, sort of. Apparently, they like had their, they had their own YMO haircut, and it's like you know it's like kind of like the Japanese businessman haircut now, like the Beatles had the mop down there. So, but yeah, they were kind of like they they started doing. I got into them through this guy Hosono that does the bass in the band, and he had a bunch of albums that were kind of the same, like the band or you know, kind of like uh, Americana style. And, and then it kind of shifted into this like jazzy tropical that got really influenced by like Hawaiian music. So yeah, I got that, but then, you know, they shifted over to like synthesizer world. YMO is like all synthesizer based on the folk coder. Um, but not in the way, like, I mean, it's even, it's like not as like, a, like not, I want to say offensive, but like it's not as cold. It's like, it's like fun, you know, early synthesizer. Because craft work sometimes is kind of like, you know, you feel like you're listening to like you know, robots or something, you know, but this is like, hey, you know, it's like bubblegum synth stuff. So. But yeah, that first album has a lot of really great songs on it. Um, kind of like introduced me to uh, the idea of buying old synthesizers a lot and trying them out, which maybe was a good thing, but maybe not a very good thing for my bank account. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. I love that album. They're great guys. They all Ryuichi. He has a whole career. Everything this guy's doing is won an Oscar for he did the score to that Last Emperor movie. I don't know. So. Still, he, like, still, he still does his thing. He got throat cancer last year, so hopefully he's doing better. But he got ill. So. Great. Number four, we'll go with uh, my my uh, new but good friend uh, Conan Moccasin's album. I know. I think it had two different names, like depending on the territory it was released in. But I think it's called uh, "Please Turn Me Into the Snap." Or at least that's the one that I got. Right? That's the name mm -hmm. Anyway, this album, this guy Conan Mox, a New Zealand guy, is starting to, you know, I mean, he started this over here, but for a long time, I was listening to him maybe five, six years ago, this album, and uh, it never, he, like, he never toured the States, never came over, it was really confusing. He was playing in Europe a lot, and you know, he's from, you know, the, the New Zealand, so he played down there and stuff, in France and, you know, the UK, I think he lived in for a while, but never, he was like a mystery to, like, me and all my homies who listened to it. 
And then years go by, he, you know, re-releases it on Mexican Summer. And uh, now he's over here, lives in L.A. now, see the guy every once in a while. But this album, for me, was kind of like, I used to be the kind of guy, like, no guitar pedals, no guitar effects, just like, turn the amp way up and put the reverb on and that's that. But then I listen to this, and it's like, weird sounds, and he plays really weird, and, you know, it's like, it's just kind of like a new, kind of like open my, uh, broaden my horizons with guitar playing, which is, you know, and now I'm just trying to, still, I'm just trying to rip them off. And the vocals are a little, strange. the vocals are a little different, right? Strange, yeah. Sexy, kind of. Sexy toad, or something like that. Sexy. Um, okay, we'll do a fun one here. Uh, significant Other by Limp Bizkit. Um, I, I haven't listened to it since, for probably you know, 15, 20 years at this point. But, uh, you know, that's crazy, I can say that. Uh, I had it back 20 years ago. I got it for Christmas when I was in like, you know, grade one or grade two. Not because I liked Limp Bizkit or even understood what it was, but it's because this, this kid that I went to elementary school named Jacob Kozeel, he was like, yeah, man, Limp Bizkit is dumb. And I was like, okay, and I got the CD. And uh, yeah, also I got that and, and Kid Rock, uh, American Badass, another jam. Yeah. I want to see a dog in the <laughs> Perfect. That's my, my music beginnings. Oh, wow. 